question. Who you calling up? Put your hands on me, bitch. Come on. Put your hands on me. I guarantee you 911 won't get here fast enough for your ass. Come on. Yo, believe that. The way this movie and the show that it's based on used to have me in a chokehold back in the 90s. Listen, there was not a summer, holiday, or sick day that didn't consist of me watching the Jerry Springer show and all the other talk shows. And to further prove how much I love this show, tell me why I still have one Jerry guest ingrained in my memory. Let me present Exhibit A. Flashback. Her name was Brittany, and every time I saw that she was returning to the show, I walked home a little bit faster that day. I had to make sure I didn't miss not a minute because I knew I was going to be entertained. Listen, Brittany didn't give not a care, and she stayed with the shits. Say one thing she didn't like, and it was an instant Molly Walk. <laughs> But this movie was my absolute fave because it was truly ridiculous. And of course, with age, I realized some trifling details about this movie. And you know we're gonna talk about it and celebrate Jerry at the same damn time. So let's get into it. So the movie starts off with us meeting two of the main characters, Angel and her mom, Connie, who are both starting their days at their jobs. Angel works at a motel and Connie has a food truck. And baby Angel must have needed more than her motel salary could afford cause she does services on the side. And while Connie is working at the truck, she's busy looking at job postings for her boyfriend, Rusty, who doesn't want to be bothered at the moment. We go to Angel who's done with her extracurriculars and learns that she's a hot commodity at the motel. My buddy told me to get a room on this floor if I want to get me a good morning blowjob. Really, he's your buddy. Like you'd remember. She makes it home after a long day. Notice that this trailer is different from the one we saw earlier. Mm hmm But anyway, she tells this to her boyfriend, Willie. So I was thinking, maybe we should just go on and do it. Why don't we just get married? Want to? Maybe. All right. She said that like she was choosing what to pick up from the market for dinner. Just carefree as hell. So later we see her go over to her mother's house and sit a little too close to her stepdaddy. Her mom starts asking her how long she'll be staying at her boyfriend's and she brushes her off while complaining that she doesn't want to talk about it. Not even three seconds after her mom leaves out the room, Angel and Rusty start making out. Talk about the disrespect and just plain nasty. Like why would you want any man who's sleeping with your mother? And why would he want to sleep with his woman's daughter? Like. What is going on here? And either this is a reoccurring issue or Connie's intuition is on point because she keeps looking back at them like she knows what they're doing. Angel and Rusty are currently watching an episode of Jerry Springer. How appropriate. But baby, this episode looks lit. We got Thea grabbing up her man and threatening him. Y'all remember Thea? <laughs> but she's getting him together, okay? When I see Laverne on that stage, first I'm gonna whoop her ass, and then I'm gonna tell the whole world that your dick is the size of a needle. Do you hear me talking to you? Do you hear me talking to you? Baby Juanita, that was her character's name, by the way, she was ready to whoop some ass. They didn't even get to conversate, and she does what she said she was gonna do. Let me tell you something. This is the size of his dick, baby. I'm not talking about my nail. So the show goes off and there's an ad of sorts at the end encouraging viewers to call in and submit their stepdaddy issues to be on the show. <laughs> Child, how fitting. And while Angel and Rusty look stupid on the couch, Connie writes down the number in front of them and then leaves them to go to bed. Again, Rusty couldn't even wait two seconds. But the trippy part is we go back to Connie who's getting ready for bed and also acting out her own Jerry scene like genuinely rehearsing you did what with my husband in my own home in my own home in my own home 
Meanwhile, Angel and Rusty are back at it and loud too. Connie is overhearing all of this, by the way, and not doing a damn thing. Baby, this is a mighty fine time to boil some grits, in my opinion. And then we get to meet another dysfunctional couple, Starletta and Damon. Starletta is currently outside Damon's bedroom listening to him have sex with her best friend, Vonda, while she's on the phone with Jerry's staff. Starletta is calling Vonda all kinds of bees and hoes, and Vonda wants to know what's up. Who you calling a hoe? Put your hands on me, bitch. Come on. Put your hands on me. I guarantee you 911 won't get here fast enough for your ass. Come on. Yo, believe that shit. Baby, I know this staff member was eating this drama up. Mind you, she was listening to all of this happen in real time. Starletta started going on about how she helped Vonda get tampons but she couldn't get any for herself. She bought her shoes so she could have a nice pair to wear when they went out. Got her hair done when she had a bad weave. Honestly, Starletta was too nice to her. But despite that, she gives her a final warning. I'm gonna let you live this time. Do this shit again. They won't be able to find your ass. I guess it's safe to say that they are definitely getting on the show. <laughs> then we go over to Jerry, who is simply trying to grab a bite to eat. He's got a waitress showing him pics of her daughter, a random guy coming up to him, telling him that his show sucks, and these random women flashing him, and this girl who comes to him with her relationship problems, and his buddy simply wants to eat and chat in peace. Jared, and my boyfriend Jared, excuse me, Fiona, Jared, yeah. Jared, I got a leprosy. Yeah. We go back to Connie yet again, trying to will her boyfriend to want to go out and get a job. Connie decides to feed him a lie about her going to the casino and not coming home until late. And that's exactly what Angel and Rusty wanted to hear because they couldn't wait to continue doing what they do best. So later on, while Angel's at work, she goes off to cash her check and meets resistance when the name on the check doesn't match what's on her license. And baby, Angel did not have time for the mess that day. I can't cash this. The name on the check doesn't match the name on the driver's license. Sorry, next please. Excuse me. And when the store clerk explains exactly why she can't and won't cash her paycheck, Angel goes off. Now I only have a 20 minute lunch break, so fuck your policy. Cash my paycheck. And won't cash your paycheck. Bitch, you gonna cash my fucking paycheck. And this quickly escalates when the security officer walks up and catches the residual smoke. And Angel's actions land her in the back of a cop car. We go back to Jerry who's talking with his buddy, Mel, and Mel is letting him know about his new lawsuits, one of which is completely ridiculous. But for Jerry, a win is a win. No, no, but they want to come back and talk about it on your show. I see. With their therapist, who's calling the disorder Jerry Center. I'm in disorder. I made the big time. Meanwhile, Rusty has bailed Angel out of jail with Connie's money. Child. He talking about she won't notice if she gets her bank statement. Like he has not a care in the world. Neither one of them do. You always take such good care of me. Baby, it's you and me, and we got the bank bed. So of course, Angel and Rusty go home to again do what they do best, but this time, Connie has a little surprise for them. She comes home early, and you can just about guess what happens next. I knew it! Get your ass over here, you little whore! Turns out, Angel and Rusty been carrying on since him and Connie started dating. And then she has the nerve to say this. Don't you hit him! I'm more of a woman him than he ever. Uh Child, tell me why Connie decides that she wants to get her lick back. So her and her walk go over to Willie, Angel's boyfriend, and she tries to lay down some unwanted loving. Looking back on this scene, she literally took advantage of him. All out in the open, and for what? To get back at her traitor of a daughter and her bum of a husband? She should have kicked both of them out of her house and kept it moving. Especially since after doing all that, Rusty and Angel were still doing what they'd always done. Yet in still, she goes on with the desperate antics. I didn't say you could wear my jacket. I didn't say you could fuck my husband. And it gets worse. Oh, I got a little bit of Willie on it. Well, you know how much that boy can shoot. Rusty could have cared less. So the next day, Connie tells this whole story to a Jerry staff member in the hopes that she can secure a trip to LA and be on the Jerry Springer show. Which ends up working because they get a call the next day telling them that they have been picked to be on the show. 
Meanwhile, Starletta and her friends, we're using that term loosely here, have also been invited on the show. Turns out, Damon has been with LaShawn too. Child, he for everybody. But LaShawn makes Starlet promise her that there won't be any chair throwing activities cause how dare Starletta seek revenge for her so-called friend sleeping with her man. All right, and we ain't gonna be ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> The next day. Chilling on the plane, yo, we flying in the air. I don't even know, but I thought I was scared. Now she just said that they was gonna keep it classy. Just look at him. Not even five minutes later. Yo ass wasn't so big, you wouldn't need all that fucking seat room. No. You know the TV Fuck gonna put 10 pounds on your big ass. Child, as soon as both groups get to Jerry's show, it's already submiss. Damon didn't waste no time. He saw Angel and Angel saw him. And it was a wrap. It was only a matter of time, and Starletta was on it. <laughs> hey, Linda Blair, spin your head around one more time, and I'ma give you exorcism. She really called that girl Linda Blair, <laughs> child. Anyway, Jerry comes out to greet them and thank them for willingly ruining their lives and reputations. As Jerry walks back to his office, Angel goes out to get his autograph and invade his personal space. Meanwhile, the other show guests are getting the rules of the show. Number one rule, there'll be no weapons whatsoever. So why they got to look at us and shit? And Connie senses that Angel is up to no good, so she ducks off to find her and notices that she's in Jerry's office. And then she starts being weird. Jerry, could you sign my t-shirt? Want me to sign the back here? Oh no, um, there's a decal back there. You better sign up front. They are so toxic <laughs> and just, they haven't invented words that could ever describe them. And as Angel heads back to the group of show guests, she runs into Damon and we don't have to think too hard about what they ended up doing. Anyway, so Connie makes it back to the orientation of sorts and she quickly notices that Angel and Damon are missing and she makes another excuse to leave out and go find Angel. And she finds them and says this. What you doing with my daughter that you ain't doing with me? Child, her and that walk. <laughs> anyway, she again makes it back just in time for Starletta to figure out that Damon has been missing long enough. And she heads out to look for him. And she makes her presence and intentions known. In America? Damon! Damon, where are you in that state, bitch? Just ruining Jerry's interview. Dude can't catch a break. But finally, Damon hears Starletta trying to hunt him down and him and Angel agree to continue their love session later on that night. And Damon tries to be slick with how he popped up all of a sudden, but it didn't work. Hey, baby, I was just looking for you. Oh, you been looking for me. And why did Angel just hop out wanting to smoke all of a sudden? Calling your mother. Fuck, are you calling a skank bitch? Hold up. Come on, you know what? There's only one skank the... bitch in this hallway, and I'm looking right the fuck at her. Child, and this escalates rather quickly and turns into a girl fight of epic proportions. And of course, Damon just stands there like he had no parts in that. And Starletta's friend Vonda lets her know what not to expect from her. I ain't trying to mess up my hair. I'm out here to be cute. I'm gonna meet Jerry. It's his and fault. I don't wanna be looking all crazy, getting all sweated up. So don't be expecting me to be fighting for you, girl. Hmm. We then go to Dumb and Dumber, Rusty and Willie, outside taking a smoke break. Rusty asks Willie if he's in fact going to marry Angel. And if that wasn't questionable enough, he offers some sketchy advice. You want some advice on how to keep her happy? She likes ice cream cones? We then go to LaShawn and Vonda, who trap Jerry in an elevator, asking him questions that they already know the answers to. I done did mine, even though I knew he was with my good friend Starletta. That don't make me bad, do it? Well, maybe just a... They are a mess. How y'all comparing y'all level of wholeness, though? Always showing your ass. Can't you keep your clothes on? And always calling me a slut. Who the slut? I ain't no slut. I just showed my stuff. At least I keep my too. stuff in the house. Child, we go back to Willie and Rusty, and Rusty is having a damn breakdown about doing the show. Apparently, he doesn't want the whole world to know just how trifling he is. Really, just how trifling they all are, because they all need help at this point. Connie continues to try to guilt trip him by bringing up how he indeed slept with her daughter, and even offers him this dry ultimatum. You walk out of that 
that show, you're walking out of this marriage. And our relationship. You are two peas in one fucked up pot. True, but he picked a mighty fine time to have some morals. Rusty tries to save Willie and I don't even know why he even tried because the girls swiftly manipulate him into staying. Willie, you don't want to do something so hurtful now, do you? After all I've done for you. Ew. So anyway, we go back to Connie and Angel who are discussing some disturbing details. Did he ever fuck with you first? Because we could soon. I was after him for a month to suck him off before he'd let me. What are you going to sue him for? He don't got shit. They so tragic. They soon hear a knock on the door and get excited, but it was just Willie asking Angel to go to the Hollywood sign, but she wanted no parts. She can't stand him, but she wants to marry him. How did they even get together? Angel goes on to tell her mom that Rusty took her $500 to bail her out of jail. They hear another knock at the door, but this time it's a welcome visitor, and the antics begin again. Hey, I'm here to see Angel. Why do you want to see a girl when you can see a woman? And Connie is sulking. Damon and Angel swiftly get things started in her room that she shares with Willie. Angel don't give a damn. Meanwhile, Starletta is patrolling the motel halls trying to find Damon. She has to be exhausted. Girl, you in LA. There's so much to do. And you around here chasing after a man that don't want to be kept. Get it together. And clearly, LaShawn and Vonda are over her antics as well because they just ignore her. She eventually makes her way down to the hotel lobby to bother this guy, but he straight up ignores her too. Child, Willie finally makes his way back to the hotel while Angel and Damon are still having fun, and he catches them. Did you know that the Hollywood sign isn't lit up at night? We then go back to Connie, who is in the beginning stages of a breakdown slash midlife crisis. I don't know why, I just said beginning stages, cause baby, she is knee deep in a tragedy. Then we go back to Starletta who is finally letting it sink in that maybe what her and Damon have ain't it. And her friends try to encourage her to go out and forget about him. It ends up working with limitations. One drink. We go back to Connie who's made it to the hotel bar and immediately spots her a gentleman to swindle and offers this delusion. They flew me out here to be on a TV show. Really? You're an actress? The whole episode's about me. And Angel and Damon are done doing the do. Then this bop plays. He said, she said, you got a business so up in the streets, cheating. Meanwhile, Willie's out drinking his sorrows away and Connie's avoiding pertinent questions. What's the name of it? I told you, I can't remember the name. What do you mean you can't remember? I Girl, why do you even offer up that lie in the first place? She makes a run for it when she sees Damon trying to make his way back to his room to wash away his sins. And of course, Connie is laying it on strong, but Damon can read right through her desperation and he wants no parts. But then she says this. Just lay next to me and hold me. Maybe tell me I'm pretty. We ain't gotta have sex. Damon decides to do a good deed for her. Funny how he couldn't even do that with his actual girlfriend. How you out here giving charity to randoms though? Child. Willie finally makes it back to their room. Not a question about what happened earlier or nothing. And Connie and Damon are dancing down the hotel halls and Vonda and LaShawn see them in action. See, Damon has lied so much that now that he's telling them the truth about not doing anything with Connie, they don't believe his ass. Later on, when the girls, along with Starletta, run into him, he got plenty of excuses. It was a beautiful night, so I decided to take a walk. Mm -hmm. So I saw this sign that said, all night Bible study. <laughs> and Starletta is in her, whatever you say, era. That's right before the, I could care less era. She's almost home free, y'all. But it's the next day and Angel and Cunny let the producers know that they have lost a stepdaddy for their I slept with my stepdaddy segment. So as they are prepping for the show, baby Connie is gearing up for her Oscar nod. What did it feel like when you found out your little girl here was having a sexual relationship with your husband? It's the worst day of my life. Child, <laughs> it's a mess. But Angel wasn't expecting her old faithful Willie to switch up. 
Y'all thought Rusty was a problem? They've officially pissed off the wrong one. I'm telling them everything. No, you are not. I am. So the show begins and the audience is ready. Oh, the memories, the feels. So Angel and Cunny are in the first segment and baby Cunny is delivering her lines. You did what with my husband? In my own home? See that? Baby, all their tea is coming out and they are finally starting to see how ridiculous they look and sound. Even Damon has to catch himself from slipping up cause he's so entertained. Right. And I know she, she ain't, she, she ain't I know no you verb. ain't looking that hard. She ain't no verb, go. But listen, shit hits the fan when the tea gets scalding hot. Apparently, the big secret is that Angel and Willie have never had sex. And she's currently pregnant with Rusty's baby. And this causes Connie to lay down her Oscar dreams and hop back to reality. And if things weren't headed straight for hell already, Willie delivers another blow. No, sick. is coming to do your show in LA and to catch her having sex with him. Whoa! Okay. And baby Starletta just needed confirmation. Did you see the two of them having sex? No, wait, hey, hey, hey. And just when things calm down, Vonda and LaShawn unleash their tea about Damon and Connie. And again, Starletta needed confirmation. Wait, hold up, hold y'all sure? Yeah! Hold my shit. So as things calm down again, Willie confronts Angel, which she didn't care for, and baby Starletta runs up to defend her new friend. Just give her a chair next to them at this point. I bet this episode has super high ratings. And Starletta finally confronts Damon. What the hell was you thinking? What, you wanted a double scoop of skein? Was that it? I hope you wore six condoms. Better yet, did you wear a body condom? And then Angel decides to get in the mix when Starletta never really asks for her help. And then it just gets terribly awkward and just downright sad when Angel and Connie start to realize just how messed up they really are. They eventually go backstage and have a heart to heart. I guess all I'm trying to say is that a parent wants to get better for a little girl. Sometimes that just ain't too easy. I don't know why I did some of the things I've done, but I am sorry. Now, she doing all this apologizing, which she needs to do. But I sure hope Angel apologizes to her ass too, because child, look, I'm over they ass. And then this lie. All things considered, Mama, I think you've done a real good job raising me. Thank you, sweetheart. As Jerry gears up to do his final thoughts, this guy decides to give him and his guests a hard time. All of you are the scum of the earth. Well, I got a program note for you, buddy. This is a slice of American life. And if you don't like it, bite something else. And of course, the crowd goes up for him. The show is finally over and Starletta has made a decision. Apparently, it's a no for the Jerry Show because she made it up in her mind that her friends aren't traitors. You know, the same ones who slept with her man, child. And Angel and Cunny decide to speak to Jerry one last time. I don't know why Jerry allowed this. This kind of stuff could have set him up for some lawsuits later on, but they are able to get a couple of pictures out of him. And Damon is still up to his antics, but this time, Starletta could care less. Meanwhile, Angel and Cunny are chilling at the hotel bar to grab one last drink before they go. Maybe I shouldn't drink now that I'm pregnant. Oh, hell. I drank when I was pregnant with you. You turned out all right. Connie tells Angel that she shouldn't marry Willie and that her and the baby should just stay with her, like Willie wants her at this point. That man is traumatized and over it. And if you thought they had learned any lessons, child. Hey, you all my neighbors? Why, oh, yeah. And that's the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Angel and Connie have to be the most dysfunctional, toxic, and just plain tragic mother-daughter duo that I have ever seen. You mean to tell me that the man you married was openly, cause there wasn't anything secret about it, sleeping with your daughter, got her pregnant, and he made it all the way to LA, alive and breathing, to do a TV show so that y'all could tell the whole world the type of fuckery y'all got going on? 
what was going on in their household for one, Angel to think it's okay and normal to sleep with her stepdaddy, and two, for this to be a continuous thing. Y'all were in this sick competition with each other. And then Connie forcing herself on her daughter's man and any man that showed interest in her. Girl, what was the reason? Rusty was a bum ass dude, but at least he had enough sense to know that what they had going on was not for the world to see. And then Willie, child, this boy was truly lost in the sauce. He just let them do whatever, bring him to wherever. He had not a care in the world. You're with somebody, barely. You know she's sleeping with a stepdaddy, pregnant by him. And y'all are entertaining the thought of getting married? The hell? I'm so glad he snapped out of it and came back to himself at the show. He was being a total pushover for both Angel and Connie, but especially Angel. It was really funny at the end when they returned home from the show and dropped him off. His facial expression said it all. He didn't give not one damn because he didn't have to deal with them or their dysfunction anymore. As for Starletta and Damon, <laughs> child, how are all your friends sleeping with your man and y'all still friends? And how is your man sleeping with all your friends and you still chasing after him? Girl, Damon had Starletta strutting down hallways, through hotels, through apartments to catch him in a lie. Damon had no respect for the relationship, her friendships, or himself for that matter, because really anybody could have gotten it. And I do mean anybody. And what I will never understand is how he showed so much grace towards Connie, and he never did that with Starletta. He gave her nothing but stress and drama, but took time out of his busy schedule to cater to Connie and make her feel good. Child, I am so glad Starletta stepped into the light and saw that Damon was nothing to chase after. But I wish that she would have dropped them friends of hers just the same because who's to say they won't jump on her new man when he comes along? I wouldn't trust none of their ass after all that. And another thing, they really could have left out the random Jerry scenes and just kept in the show parts because they served no purpose. I love Jerry, but his sex scene was not needed, bro. Anyway, y'all, I can't believe he's gone. It's crazy how so many of the actors, legends, and others that we saw growing up are slowly making their exit or have already passed. And it's kind of sad to see that happen. Rest in peace to Jerry. You kept us entertained. But that's it, y'all. Thanks for watching per usual. And I will not be doing The Best Man due to it being under NBC Universal. They are always so difficult with the copyright claims and they love to block my content without even reviewing it. And to be honest, I put in so much work on these videos and I hate to get y'all excited and they taking them down. So I'm sorry about that. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time, you guys. Bye.